In this video, I'm gonna show you how match coverage works in Madden 23, the basics of it, specifically as it pertains to two by two formations. And we're gonna be focusing in on cover four quarters first. We'll be teaching different match principles throughout the uh, channel, so make sure that you're subscribed, that way you get access to all the content. If you wanna learn more about match coverage, I made an entire defensive ebook teaching everything that I have learned about match coverage over the last couple of years. Make sure to join the Patreon to get access to that. It's only $10 and it gives you a complete ebook on match coverage. You also get access to everything in the Patreon, all of our ebooks, all of our updates. So I think it's a great deal, $10. I guarantee you that it's going to make you a better Madden player. Invest in your game and make yourself better. Join the Patreon if you want to. The link is in the description, all right? So real quick, couple basics for match coverage. One of the most important things is if you're on current gen Madden, this does this applies to you. You can't have zone drop set and play traditional quarters or palms coverage. What do I mean by traditional? I mean that if you call cover for quarters, there are some principles in match coverage that will still work, but by and large, the majority of the principles don't work. So you, you really don't wanna have zone drops set for this. If you're on next gen, you don't wanna have zone drop set, but you also wanna make sure that your zone coverage, it's normally set to default. You want to make sure that that is set to match. That is super, super important. That is going to activate your match coverage. Now in the nickel 3-3 cub, I think it's the best to teach from because you can actually adjust it really, really well. The cover four show two is cover four quarters. That's what it is. Um, it plays just like cover four quarters, okay? So cover four quarters, what are the rules and how do I run it? Cover four quarters is also known as mod sky. Man on, mod standing for man on demand. And really quarters, one of the most important principles that I can teach you about match coverage is the numbering system within the coverage. Um, and so what happens is the defense is going to number the receivers from outside to inside. So in this example here, Michael Irvin is the number one receiver on the left side of the screen. Another quick principle about match coverage is it is a split field coverage. The center splits the field in half. So the left side of the coverage and the right side of the coverage are typically can actually be completely different from one another. They're dividing the field in half and they're saying, we're gonna play a three over two triangle on the right. And we're going to play in this example, a three over two triangle on the right and the left, okay? And then this guy is going to divide the field in half, basically. That's why he's called the three receiver hook. Now quickly, the zones you have in quarters coverage, if you look at this real quick, you have the outside quarter, the inside quarter, the inside quarter, and the outside quarter. So left side, outside quarter, left side, inside quarter, left side, or right side, inside quarter, and right side, outside quarter. You have left side quarter flat. You have right side quarter flat. And then you have this zone by the middle linebacker that is three receiver hook, or uh, three rec hook, which stands for three receiver hook. Three receiver is actually in the numbering system. And again, they number these players from outside to inside. So Michael Irvin is the number one receiver to the left side of the field. Christian Kirk is the number two receiver to the left side of the field. Julian Edelman is the number two receiver or the number one receiver to the right side of the field. And Owen Daniels is the number two receiver to the right side of the field. No matter what formation you're in, you can count from outside to in. If you can count to four, you can play quarters coverage, okay? Uh, and then Jerome Bettis. Now the running back, when you're in a two by two set, is going to be the third receiver. He's the third receiver to the right. And so this three receiver hook is going to be relating to the running back. If the running back runs to the flat, then he's going to release him to the quarter flat. If the running back runs over the middle, then the quarter flat is going to, or the three receiver hook is going to stay with him. If the running back runs a flat to the left side, he's going to carry him, deliver him to the quarter flat defender. All right. Now, the most basic thing that I can teach you about how these quarter zones are going to work, especially against a two by two basic spread formation, there are different rules for bunch. There are different rules for tight. There are different rules for 
trips formations. And we're going to get into all of those. So make sure, like I said, you either stay subscribed to the channel or you check out the ebook. The ebook has everything in it. Um, but the best tip that I can give you is we have to understand what defines a vertical route. What defines a vertical route? So man on demand means if my receiver runs vertical past a certain point, I'm going to take him in man coverage. If my receiver does not run vertical, then I am going to poach or help on the other routes on the field. So, for example, if number, so um, the outside quarter here on the left side, Verrett, is relating to the number one receiver. If number one goes vertical, I play man to man. And you also are playing with outside leverage. Why? Because where's your help? Your help is inside. Cornerbacks want to play lev with leverage to where their help is. So I want to funnel him back to my help, basically. All right, same thing with Bland over here. Carmichael and Woodson are relating to the number two receivers on their corresponding sides, and they're asking themselves the question, does my receiver run a vertical? If the answer is yes, I'm taking him. Now, how do I want to play him? Generally, when you're an inside quarter, you're the help to the inside, especially in a, a split field coverage. So what I want to do is I want to try to funnel him to the outside. So I'm going to be playing with inside technique, and I'm going to funnel him to the outside because this guy can potentially help me depending on what that, that number one receiver runs. It also is a harder throw for the quarterback. These quarter flats jobs are to reroute the seam so that these guys can have time to come down and play it. And then they're going to be taking the flat. Okay. And then as I already talked about, the three receiver hook is relating to the number three receiver. The primary thing he's doing is essentially, especially in a two by two world, he's going to be living in this little box right here. And he's looking for crossing routes. Okay. Now, this all hinges on the definition of what is a vertical route. So we're going to go over a couple. So if I take Michael Urban, I put him on a smoke screen, and I put Kirk on a um, on a corner, you're going to see that that is not considered a vertical route, and you see how they're going to bracket the corner route. Now, what if I put Chris or Michael Urban on a five yard out? Is that a vertical route? You see here. No, it's, or uh, whoops, I apologize. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't forget the audible down to quarters. You see that it's 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 not going to be a vertical route. So again, you'll see here. He looks okay. I'm gonna. Oh, but now I got to go help out, as you see right there, and he's bracketing that number three. So we know that a five yard route is not a vertical route. A zero yard route is not a, a vertical route. What about a slant route? A slant route's about. To a degree, about seven yards ish. Um, you see here. Here's a slant. Oh nope, that's not a vertical route either. So we're gonna bracket. Okay. Generally speaking, the best thing, typically in Madden, the best way to explain it would be a route past ten yards. So I actually think it's like a route past about seven yards, um, but. There's not a lot of routes that are like seven yards, right? So um, now we're going to run a streak and we're going to run a corner. And what you're going to see is that number one is going to take that streak with outside leverage. And then that safety is going to take that corner with inside leverage, as you can see right there. Okay. So a route past 10 yards. The same thing would be true if I put Michael Irvin on a smart route and in route, even though this is a really weird route combination. You know, whoops, I, again, I forgot to audible down to quarters. But you see the idea, okay? You see the idea. So now um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the number two receiver. So what if the number two receiver doesn't run a vertical route? Let's say he runs like a slant and you run a post. Let's say this is one of the best concepts in Madden 23 right here. Boom. Okay, watch the, how this plays. You see, oh, it's a slant. In the safeties example, he actually takes the slant. Sometimes... Um, the slant will be taken. Sometimes it won't be taken. And honestly, a lot of it depends on this idea of pressing these safeties and how it reroutes that slant as another piece. So if I hard flat here, you'll see that slant won't get pressed and he still is going to go with it. 
which is problematic because as you can see it leaves that post one-on-one -on -one without help so you need to understand like your reroutes you need to understand you know your responsibility so if he's going to take that slant now i've got a robot back up into the middle of the field and take the post or something like that okay now if i run a drag it's a little bit different you're going to see here here's a drag watch he's going to release that and look what he does he's now going to poach onto or rob the post of one okay so that is kind of a, a very simple way uh, to think about quarters coverage man on demand typically relating to the number one uh, or the receiver that they are over the top of. Uh, and this is the best base coverage in the game, in my opinion. It, it's so super, super effective and super simple if you learn the rules. So if you want to learn the, the entire system of how to run match coverage, make sure you join the Patreon. The link to sign up for that is down in the description below.